Okay, in this video, we're going to be talking about the an overview of the Spring Boot microservices that we are going to be using for our Kubernetes by example course. So these are, uh, I have three Spring Boot microservices. I originally uh, developed these for my course up on Udemy, uh, Spring Boot microservices with Spring Cloud for beginner guru. I know kind of a mouthful for the course title there, uh, but it does cover specifically the development of microservices using Spring Boot and also a, a number of features specifically of Spring Cloud. We're not gonna be using everything in that, so we're, we are modifying these. This is the basis of these services. The services themselves mimic the operation of a brewery. So kind of a, a neat little project that we have here to work with. Uh, data is going to be persisted to a MySQL database using JPA, Hibernate as the implementation. And then we're gonna be using JMS uh, for messaging between the services. So let's take a closer look at these three services that we have in play here. The beer inventory service. So this is gonna be holding information about inventory levels. So this is gonna expose a REST API to get inventory information. And then the service also uses JMS messaging. So we are increasing inventory from uh, being notified of a brewing operation. So if we brew beer, inventory goes up. Uh, then we decrease inventory from orders being allocated. And again, these are two different JMS messages that the services consumes. The beer service itself, that is going to hold information about the different beers that our brewery, in air quotes, is brewing. Uh, it expose a REST API for a CRUD operation against different beers that we are holding within our system. Uh, we are using JMS messaging to uh, say, hey, we brew beers to increase inventory. That sends out a message consumed by the inventory service to increase inventory. And then uh, we also have a scheduled job that wakes up, checks the inventory balances, and creates brewing jobs, <laughs> air quotes, uh, to increase inventory. Now, next is the beer order service. This is going to hold information about beer orders. Again, it's going to provide a REST API about uh, order operations. And then also, this is going to be using JMS messaging to, uh, air quotes, allocate beer orders. This has a very important service called the tasting room service. This is a scheduled job to uh, order beers from our, our tasting room at our hypothetical brewery. This, of course, is going to drive down inventory. As inventory goes down, uh, we trigger brewing to increase inventory. So the key takeaway I want you to have here is that the beer order service is generating orders. This creates demand in the system. So this demand is requesting allocations from the inventory service, which is in turn reducing inventory. This triggers the beer service to, uh, air quotes, brew beer, adding to inventory. So what this gives us is seeing the trio of services working in conjunction to, uh, because we do have the REST APIs involved uh, as well as the JMS messaging. We can see and monitor uh, log traffic to actually see activity in the system. So that tasting room service, real key takeaway I want you to have here is the tasting room service, which is within the beer order service, is creating demand on the system, which is going to get all the, the trio of services working together. Very important concept here. Now, finally, the inventory failover service, this is a failover common microservice pattern to provide a failover. So if things go away uh, in our hypothetical situation here, we wanted to always have air quotes inventory. So if our inventory service goes down, the inventory failover service is always going to return an on hand quantity of 999. So this just gives us a positive value of inventory. In our uh, hypothetical situation here, we want to always be able to serve as an order. So if we need an order, we want to be showing that there is on-hand inventory available. So in the original configuration, this was designed for a non-Kubernetes environment, uh, kind of a generic environment that we set, set up. We are using Spring Cloud Gateway in front of the services, Eureka for service discovery, Spring Cloud Config for configuration services, and then we can see that the three services are deployed, each with their own MySQL backend, and then also ActiveMQ for our JMS broker. And then, of course, we have our inventory failover service, which is completely standalone. It doesn't have a, a database. It just needs to provide back a positive response. Now, some of the changes that we are making for a Kubernetes environment, uh, we're not going to be using Eureka. Kubernetes is going to be using for service discovery, so we are removing that from the old config. Uh, Spring Cloud Config, we're also not using that. We're going to use Kubernetes to manage these environment properties. 
Then I'm also going to be moving the services to use a single MySQL instance. Uh, this is really just for simplicity. The focus is on this course is actually deploying on Kubernetes itself. We're not talking about constructing Spring Boot microservices or proper microservice development. So I'm taking a few liberties here uh, just for our simplicity's sake. The configuration would apply if you want to set up multiple MySQL databases, you could, and nothing's stopping you. But for simplicity here, we're just going to be using one MySQL database. And then also, again, for simplicity, all the code examples I'm putting into a single GitHub repository, we will use a multi-module Maven build, and I'll, I will be giving you access to all that source code so you can fully see all these examples. And again, this is for simplicity in a real microservices environment. We would be, of course, using independent source code repositories. So just a heads up, I'm, I'm just making a couple, I'm like coloring outside the lines of commonly accepted things for microservices just for uh, pragmatic sake. So to take a look at our actual Kubernetes configuration. So we will be using a gateway. That gateway will expose the different services. So the beer service, order service, inventory service. Uh, we will also be setting up the inventory failover. Again, we will be using Kubernetes for service discovery. Uh, we do need to have our, our services, so we will be using MySQL, ActiveMQ for JMS. Those will be all exposed. And we will be uh, deploying this entire thing under Kubernetes. Coming up in the course, in additional lessons, of course, we will be detailing each step here to take these into a Kubernetes environment.